Hey there, Mercedes here from prettywebs.com and today I'm bringing you a watercolor effect Photoshop tutorial. And what we're gonna be doing is using watercolor brushes to create masks in Photoshop to get that watercolor look. So this is gonna be more for those of you who are wanting to create assets to keep for later on or you know to sell on a marketplace or something like that. Uh, rather than just making a one-off style. So typically when you're creating something like this, all you'll do is come in here. So I have my image here. Um, I've added my watercolor pattern and all of that here to the bottom. And then when you click on this, you'll add this mask in here. I'm actually gonna turn it black so that I can use the watercolor and then just kind of paint this out. And then of course you'd add filters and do all of that stuff. There's plenty of tutorials on how to do that on YouTube. But what I wanted to show you was how to use these same brushes to create multiple different uh, watercolor shapes so that you can mask out your images later on and add effects in that way. So when you do it like this, I mean, I guess you could come in here and adjust your, your settings here uh, for this mask and you could unlink it and move it around in that way but you can see you're kind of limited when it comes to that too so what i usually do is just create my own masks and then uh, reuse them for different images instead of you know having this mask on this image and then having to recreate something for another image i just create a, a lot of different styles and let me show you what i mean by that so i'm going to go ahead and delete this mask and I'm back at my regular image. I do have this layer underneath. I've put a pattern in here. Um, the pattern is called Natural Paper. It's from transparenttextures.com. It's a free texture, but if you are using it for commercial use, you might wanna uh, you know, just double check on that. Or you can also find uh, watercolor paper textures inside of Photoshop. But I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. This is the texture that we're using. I'm going to add a new layer right here. And then I'm going to come in here to my brushes. And I am using the Kyle's Real Watercolor Brushes for this. I do have tutorials on creating your own watercolor brush. I'll go ahead and leave a link up in the corner down in the description if you're interested in learning how to make your own watercolor brush. But um, this collection is free from Adobe. And you, you know there's so many available here. I'm going to go ahead and show you what I'm talking about here. So um, if you come to this website, adobe.com products, Photoshop brushes, I'll leave, a, I'll leave you a link down in the description for this as well. But um, there's always different brushes. This is the set that I'm using today, the watercolor brushes. But you can see that there's, you know, he has tons of free brushes. As long as you have an Adobe subscription, you can grab this for free. Okay, so I'm back here in Kyle Real Watercolor Brushes and I'm using this one right here, the Kyle Real Watercolor. He calls it Beast, you know, but you can use really any of these brushes to create something. But I'm gonna try working with this one. Uh, I'm using black and white here and i have my flow to 51 i'm going to actually bring that down to 25 and then i'll bring my opacity to about um, 65 is fine you can go up or down depending on how much transparency you want because we're going to be using this as a mask the darker it is the more your image is going to show through it so you know if you want uh, some areas where it's you know, kind of cloudy and you're not really seeing the image very much, then go ahead and leave those a little bit lighter. But for this one, I'm just going to come in and start drawing. And I'm just tapping at this point, you know, just kind of going through and tapping. And you can see these areas right here that are really dark. Those are going to show through really well. Another thing that would be helpful here um, is for you to just have a an image that you're working with. So for example, if I come over here, I'm going to turn this one on option on the keyboard and then hover and click that's going to clip that in there. So it'll kind of give you an idea of what your image is going to look like when it's inside there. Depending on the colors of the images, they're all going to look kind of different. So I tend not to do that. I usually just, you know, leave it like this um, and then I'll come back when I have the image and then just go through and see what uh, blending mode looks best 
for the image and I kind of like this one a little bit darker so I would leave it something like this and you can see I haven't used any filters on this. I haven't used any layer styles, nothing. This is just the mask over this image and you can see what a difference it's made just by changing the blending mode for the image. And then you can just, you know, add some text here at the bottom or whatever. And that's gonna give you a quick social media image or, you know, whatever you need to use it for. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off and release the clipping mask on this because uh, what I wanted to show you was how you could make several of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and make another layer here and I'm gonna go back into those brushes and I'm gonna choose a different brush. So maybe this one right here, um, this is 80 rough and I'm gonna try using that one. I'm gonna turn this bottom one off and I'm gonna make this new one. Again, the brush size we want really big here and I'm bringing down my flow. We'll try 50% on this one and then, um, I don't know, 30% on the opacity and then just come in here and start tapping through. So the sun looks a little more soft. I went a little bit off the canvas. Um, that's gonna really affect the image also because if I wanna move this, so let me just grab that and move it over. You can see how I have that really harsh edge right there. So you don't want that. So I'm just gonna go back and just remove that. Go back into my brush and then just, you know, kind of be careful around the edges. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up that image again and then clip it into this new one and then maybe work with uh, blending modes on this one. The difference there between that one and uh, this one right here. So it, it's going to give you a different outcome with each one of these. If you wanted to save these for later, like as PNG images or, you know, to resell. So all you would do is make all of the masks that you want to make. And then you'll come up here to file, export, and you're going to export layers to files and, you know, name it whatever you want, masks, and I'm gonna browse where I want this to go. So the file type for this would be a PNG 24 only because that is the best quality that you're gonna get and it is transparent. So you wanna make sure that transparency is checked and trim layers is also checked and then you just click run on this. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe and visit prettywebs.com for more design resources and tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching.